Hi, my name is Adam Tyndale, and I'm happy to present the project Reshaping Time, Exploring Grid Interfaces for ANSI Metric Patterns that I created with Colin Clark. In this project, we explore a simple method for expressing rhythms that change subdivisions over their cycles, ANSI metric, meaning changing meter. The project started when I was struggling to create a rhythm that contained a quintuplet on an Ableton push device. I set out to create a polymetric, polytuplet, and polyphasic sequencer afterwards. I'm a drummer, and I've always been interested in creating rhythms, especially with shifting subdivisions. I grew up in the age of drummers being afraid of drum machines, uh, taking their jobs, which is something I would love to s discuss with you. But I also grew up watching and listening to people make incredible and beautiful things with drum machines. In this paper, there's a short discussion of Mark Bell's brilliant production on Bjork's Hunter that references a wonderful YouTube video by Captain, Captain Pigant uh, that describes the difficulty of creating a drum track uh, that oscillates between 16th notes and triplet divisions using an MPC. Uh, I've long been inspired by the monome devices the visual tactile grid's a wonderful tool for performance, especially sequencing. To that end, this project imagines uh, tactile grid interfaces into a series of regions. Each region is read from bottom to top, left to right, and two touches on the grid define a region by providing its bounding edges. The length of each row corresponds to the subdivision of that beat and the number of rows is the number of beats in that region. A region can be modified by touching its leftmost edge and then defining a new bound for that row or series of rows. Uh, you're now seeing expressions of that quarter note, eighth note quintuplet figure uh, that vexed me at the outset. This approach allows for rhythms of various beat lengths and subdivisions to be expressed together. One of the bonuses of this approach is that only cells that describe an event in a rhythm are used uh, on the grid. So you can fit multiple rhythms into the same grid or scene. You can also express a four on the floor pattern using only a single cell of the grid while leaving everything else available. This addresses polymetric and polytuplet. The phase of a sequence can be adjusted by switching modes uh, to the phase adjustment mode, I'm a Vim user, and touching a cell within e a region. Each sequence can run with its own phase offset, creating all kinds of wonderful magic. A JavaScript layer is used to describe the cells, region, and grid, as well as the sequencer, sequence, and notes. The input manager is responsive responsible for managing the input mappings. In this case, the MIDI mapping from the Ableton push and the output manager is responsible for sending out the corresponding messages to the hardware unit. The mediator class is responsible for managing the sync between the time representation, the visual representation and responding to the sync messages from the sequencer in addition to the input manager to determine if a valid action has been declared like creating a new region or modifying an existing region or changing the phase. The max patch uses a phaser based sequencer approach that is described in Graham Wakefield's book uh, Generating Sound and Organizing Time as well as Gregory Taylor's book uh, Adventures in Sequencing with Max MSP. The patch leverages some of the features introduced in Max 8.3, which are beautifully demoed on Philip Meyer's uh, YouTube channel. A central clock provides a sync to multiple sequencer channels that stretches the phaser to be the length of the number of beats for a particular sequence. And then the what tilde object provides indices for the specific events in the sequence. The result is a trigger sequencer that I have briefly augmented as a gate sequencer and a filter pinger. 
There are many other features planned, wanted, missing from the current implementation. I have been using a, a push one since that's what I own, but I hope to provide mappings to more instruments over time. Please let me know if you have a device you're interested in and I'll work on that mapping first. There are many, many weaknesses to this approach, like the extra work that it takes to edit any specific event or the difficulty to express microrhythms or the bigger problem of being able to express nested tuplets and creating some sort of uh, Scrabble-like monstrosity. Thank you for listening. Thank you to the reviewers who provided really useful feedback. And thank you for your questions. It has been an absolute pleasure to speak to you today. <laughs>